what's going on guys and welcome back to my channel some time ago i published a video about a roadmap for software developers and how you can become a good software developer and it seems that you enjoyed that video and on the comments you told me and you asked me also to create a video talking about a roadmap to master the best and one of the most used frameworks which is the spring framework and in this video i'm going to walk you through based on my experience of course i will tell you how to master and how to learn this spring framework in an efficient way and talking about the spring framework also you can check my youtube channel and also my personal website i will leave all the links in the description below you can find many courses and many videos that i'm creating every week in order to learn this amazing and this fabulous framework and also pretty i'm pretty much sure and really believe me if you master and learn uh, really good this framework i'm pretty much sure that you will be able to secure a job with a really high and really nice salary before we start take one second hit the subscribe button join us on youtube and also don't forget to join all the social media I will leave you all the links below and be part of the greatest community that we are building right now. You can find me uh, on LinkedIn, on Discord, uh, Instagram, and so many other ne uh, networks. I will leave all the links below. And as I mentioned before, I would like to invite you to go to my website and learn from there. And also you can get a certification of completion and it might also uh, be useful and help you in your CV and your job search. Now, let's start and let me walk you through the roadmap for the Spring Framework. So as I mentioned, some time ago, I published the right hand side uh, of this roadmap right here and I called it Software Developer Roadmap and I explained all this part. And again, you asked for the Spring Framework roadmap and here it comes so now let's dive into this part so as you can see here from the choosing a path as a backend or a front end so for the backend i already mentioned spring framework as a framework to learn and now let's dive and let's walk through this flame framework so first of all what i really recommend is going and learning from the official documentation and i know it's not straightforward for some people but the spring documentation is really rich documentation and you can find almost everything and all the information that you need and again let me explain to you and let me convince you why you need to go and to walk through the documentation imagine you are building a software or you are building a solution so this solution is not known and you don't have enough time to teach everyone who's asking how to use this solution. So what you will be doing, you will be absolutely creating a documentation and this documentation needs to be clean and clear and straightforward for everyone. And when it comes to Spring Framework, the documentation from there is really nice. And I got one question also so many times, how I know all of this? So the answer is I always go to the documentation, read from there and then start implementing and not just directly implementing, but I just start trying out things, testing things. Also, when I see a new annotation or a new code, I try also to go through the code and read the documentation of that part. So documentation is really important. And now let's move on and let me explain to you how to get started with the Spring Framework. So when it comes to the Spring Framework, it's highly recommended that you start with the Spring Core and don't do the mistake that I see everyone is doing, to be honest. So everyone is jumping directly to Spring Boot. So I would really not recommend doing that because Spring Boot has a lot of things under the hood a lot of things that are really already implemented behind and it's already working so in order to to correctly and to understand the spring boot framework really in deep and to be really good at using this this framework so first of all you need to to understand the spring core and when we say spring core we are mainly talking about dependency injection 
also Spring IOC or the IOC container, Spring AOP for uh, aspect oriented programming. And these three uh, things right here will help you understand how this framework works from the inside and then start learning about Spring MVC. And I will just come back in one second to this part right here. And then of course you need to understand the beans configuration and scopes. This means how to configure beans, how to create beans and what are the different scopes of a bean. Also you need absolutely to understand the bean life cycle. So when you have a bean, uh, in the spring container, what is the life cycle of that bean? And this will help you a lot manage and understand the beans. And of course, do not forget to learn and to understand at least some of the main spring annotations that are belong to the spring core. Because as I mentioned, Spring Boot already uses a lot of these annotations and all of these spring core in the background. Now let's go back and let me explain this Spring MVC. So in order to understand Spring MVC, first of all, go ahead and understand and try to learn a little bit about HTTP. HTTP is just a protocol, but Spring MVC or Spring Framework uses this protocol to expose endpoints. Okay, so when we talk about REST APIs, we mainly talk about these actions, or we also call them HTTP operations. So for example, you need to understand what is, what is a patch, post, get, delete, and boot, what is the difference between them, when to use what, and so and so forth. Again, so in order to master and to really understand in deep this really awesome framework, you need to understand and or try at least to implement something from scratch and try to implement a small project, for example, using uh, servlets, JSP files, and try to understand the MVC architecture and its different components. So this is really important. And once you're done with this, and when you move to Spring Boot Framework, you will be really comfortable understanding and knowing what is doing what. And then after that, before even again, before even going to uh, Spring Boot, try to understand Spring Security. And to understand Spring Security, try to understand what is authentication, authorization, and also JWT author authentication. And if you want to understand that, just go to my channel and I already have videos covering all these topics right here. Also try to understand what is OAuth2 and mainly I would say understand or even trying the OAuth2 providers like Google, Facebook, GitHub, also Keyclock, Okta, and you can also even go to the cloud and use Amazon Cognito and Microsoft Azure Active Directory B2C. And as I mentioned, also you can find a lot of videos about spring security in my YouTube channel. And mainly now you can find the Spring 6 or the Spring Boot 3 because Spring Boot 3 is already built on top of the Spring Framework version 6. Now, I guess it's your happy part or the best part for you. Now you can go and start learning the Spring Boot. So to learn Spring Boot, first of all, you need to understand and to know what is a starter because starters are the base or the backbone of the Spring Boot framework, of course, combined with auto configurations and embedded servers. So because Spring Boot framework leverage a lot the auto configuration and it comes with really low, co low config or even sometimes and for some starters, it's no configuration. But you need to understand first what is a starter and how this auto configuration works. And even if you want to go deeper and deeper and understand things really from scratch, you can also check what is or how the auto configuration is implemented. Also, when we talk about Spring Boot, because it's really used when we talk about the microservices architecture. And by the way, you can also go and check the new video I published about microservices. So you can also learn from that. So also Activator is one starter, which is responsible of um, exposing metrics. So I won't go too much into the details, but the Spring Activator is responsible of exposing metrics of your running application. It's not only used in microservices, don't get me wrong, but it's also a part of Spring Boot framework. 
we can move to Hibernate and to understand Hibernate. I know Hibernate is totally different and it's even independent from Spring and Spring Boot. And you might also say why I did not mention this with the Spring Core, but it also goes with both of them. So you can whether start learning Hibernate while learning uh, Spring Core or Spring Boot, it's, it's okay for both of them. So with Hibernate, we have Spring Data. You need to understand what is a transaction exactly. So what this means, what happens when you start a transaction to communicate with, with your data storage system, for example, a database or any uh, other storage system. Also, you need to understand what is the entity lifecycle, the relationships, the one-to-one, one-to-many, to many many-to-one, and many-to-many. Many. Also, when it comes to Spring Data, we have many things to learn. So Spring Data JPA, Spring Data MongoDB, Spring Data JDBC, and JDBC Template. And if you want to understand all the Spring Data and the Hibernate part right here, including Spring Data, Transactions, Entity Lifecycle, Relationships, Inheritance, uh, how to work with queries, named queries, uh, JDBC templates and so on and so forth. I already created a course which is more than six hours and I'm still updating and upgrading this course to cover a lot and a lot of the spring data framework. And by the end of this course, it you will be able to really use um, in a confident way the spring data JPA. Also, if you want to, if and also if you're new to my channel and if you go and subscribe right now, I will leave the link of that uh, course with um, a coupon code uh, or a reduction that you can use to get um, a discount on that course. All right, so then after Spring Boot, after Spring Core and all we mentioned before, now let's move to the most important part, which is testing. I know of every developer, they don't like tests. We don't like to implement tests, but believe me, testing is one of the most important phase of software development. If you don't implement tests, make sure and be 100% sure when your application grows and if you want to include uh, a new feature or if you want to extend your application, be sure and it's like, I'm telling you this based on my experience, you will face a lot of bugs. And to avoid bugs, the best thing to do is testing. So really test your application. Also this testing branch right here can really go up after Spring Core so you can learn Spring Core and try to start implementing uh, things and then you can start then learning tests but it's fine I think it, it can come uh, to this place. So when we talk about testing we mainly talk about service testing so you absolutely you will have services in your application so you need to learn how to test them also you need to, to learn JPA testing to learn your persistence uh, layer of your application also, you need to know what is mock MVC or how to mock your beans, generally speaking. Again, one of the most important things about testing is using and re not just using, but understanding the Spring Boot test annotation. And also you need to know how to work and or how to test your application using mockings. Right, so the testing is really important. Also, if you need anything or if you if you really want to learn more and to know more about testing, just drop a comment and let me know if you need something like that and I will create content for this. And finally, we come to the microservices. So when we talk about microservices, we mainly talk about Spring Cloud, Docker and Kubernetes, and then we talk about message queues. So let's start from the top to the bottom. When we talk about Spring Cloud, we mainly talk about Spring Cloud Gateway, Cloud Configuration or uh, Configuration Servers, Circuit Breaker, uh, OpenFane, REST Templates, Resilience Fergy, Eureka, Sleuth, and so and so forth. We have so many tools when we talk about Spring Cloud. But uh, I really want to highlight something here. It's really important to learn and to know how to implement things. 
such as API Gateway, uh, also uh, configuration and so on and so forth, even Eureka, which is the registry server. And by the way, I want to mention again that if you want to learn microservices, I published a video about that and it will give you a first hands on microservices architecture. Coming back to the Spring Cloud, when we talk, for example, about the Spring Cloud Gateway, I'm pretty sure or I can ensure you that uh, maybe in production or in some existing project, you won't have an API gateway or even you won't have a registry because these are services can be provided by some cloud providers. For example, you can be using uh, AWS gateways and it's really uh, okay, let me say it straightforward. It's sometimes it's really better to use um, a managed solution for that because for that you you won't even need to manage any licenses, any load balancers. You won't be um, really in the stress of managing anything. So for example, if you use uh, an AWS gateway, we will also have the, the load balancer. You will have a lot of services that you can use in order to make your life easier and make the development process more and more faster. Um, yeah, so uh, after that or after learning uh, the Spring Cloud or even so before, okay, so let me tell you one thing. Before, uh, before we move ahead to the next part, try at least to implement uh, a microservices architecture with all the components and all the Spring Cloud components that uh, I mentioned right here, because it's really important to understand how things really works from the inside. It's not just about using some existing services, but it's really better and it's really good to learn how to implement your own solution for some cloud uh, services, for example, Gateway, or even registry or even any other uh, Spring Cloud service. And after that, we can move to the Docker and Kubernetes. So Docker, it's made like we, I mentioned Docker here, but uh, I want to mention mainly or generally speaking, uh, it's about containerizations. Uh, it's just like using containers to run and to manage your applications. And uh, also you can use Kubernetes for the orchestration and so on and so forth. Uh, this is quite uh, a big topic. And also if you want to learn more about that, just drop me a comment and I will create content for that. And finally, we need to talk about message queues. Message, message queues, I, I mean uh, mainly, the asynchronous communication. We And for that, we can talk about RabbitMQ, we can talk about Kafka, and also we can talk maybe about one uh, cloud service, which is SQS from Amazon. And message queues or asynchronous communication is really important, especially when we work with the microservices architecture, because imagine uh, having a use case. So imagine you have an application where in the uh, when it comes to the business implementation, you want to send emails to the customers or to the users of that application, and you want that um, functionality to be asynchronous. Asynchronous, this means that we don't want to block the user and make him wait until this operation is done. Or also, for example, imagine that we want to send all the emails or to process all this data, for example, at night or at some uh, point of time, and we don't want the user to get blocked. We can send notifications later on, but it's not the, what we are uh, talking about right here, but we are talking mainly about asynchronous communication. So yeah, uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, I try to cover almost everything uh, about this awesome and this really beast framework. And I hope you enjoyed that. Also, if I missed something and uh, well, I might miss things, but if I missed uh, something, just let me know and I will also try to update this diagram or even if you need any other roadmaps for any uh, anything else, just drop me a message, drop a comment and I will answer you as soon as possible. Also, I would like to invite you once again, if you're new here and if you like and enjoy my content, just subscribe and enable the notifications and I would really invite you to uh, hit thumbs up button so we can satisfy together the YouTube algorithm and help this video reach more and more people. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much and see you next time.